Vivian Lee is a British stage and film actress. She has twice won an Oscar in the Best Actress category for her performance as Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind and Blanche Dubois in the film version of Desire Streetcar. She also received a Tony Award for her work in the Broadway version of the musical Comrade. Lee believed that her physical characteristics sometimes made it difficult to take her seriously as an actress. Despite her fame as a screen actress, Lee was primarily a stage performer. During her 30-year career, she has played a variety of roles, from the heroines of comedies by Noel Coward and George Bernard Shaw to classic Shakespearean characters such as Ophelia, Cleopatra, Juliet, and Lady Macbeth. The public often identified Lee with her second husband, Laurence Olivier. Lee and Olivier starred together in many stage productions, with Olivier often acting as director. She had a reputation for being difficult to work with and suffered from bipolar disorder for most of her life, as well as periodic bouts of chronic tuberculosis, which was first diagnosed in the mid-1940s and eventually killed her at the age of 53. Despite the fact that there were periods of inactivity in her career, in 1999, the American Film Institute recognized Lee as the 16th greatest female film star of classic Hollywood cinema. In 1931, Vivian met Herbert Lee Holman, a well-known lawyer 13 years her senior. Despite his disapproving attitude towards theatrical people, they got married on December 20, 1932. A year later, she gave birth to a daughter. Lee's friends suggested that she star in a small role in the movie Things Are Looking Up, which became her film debut. She hired an agent, John Glidden, who thought Vivian Holman was an inappropriate name for an actress. Rejecting his numerous offers, she took on the professional pseudonym Vivian Lee. Glidden recommended her to Alexander Korda, but he rejected her as having no potential. In 1935, she played in the play The Mask of Virtue, directed by Sidney Carroll, and received excellent reviews, followed by interviews and newspaper articles. John Betchman, the future poet laureate, described her as the essence of an English girl. Corda attended her premiere performance, admitted his mistake, and signed a film contract with her. In the fall of 1935, at Lee's insistence, John Buckmaster introduced her to Laurence Olivier. Olivier and Lee began an affair while filming the movie Fire Over England when both were still married. They started living together, their spouses refused to give them a divorce. During this period, Lee read Margaret Mitchell's novel, Gone with the Wind, and instructed her agent to recommend her to David O. Selznick, who planned to make a film version. Selznick arranged auditions with director George Cukor, and she managed to impress him. Soon, she got the role of Scarlet. Filming turned out to be difficult for Lee. She often quarreled with Victor Fleming. The film Gone with the Wind brought Lee attention and fame. The film won 10 Academy Awards. Lee was also awarded the New York Film Critics Circle Award for Best Actress. In February 1940, the couple gave them a divorce. On August 31, 1940, Olivia and Lee were married at the San Isidro Ranch in Santa Barbara, California. Olivier staged the play Romeo and Juliet on Broadway, but critics gave him a negative assessment. The couple invested almost all their savings in the project, and the failure became a financial disaster for them. Olivier then directed the film Hamilton Woman, 1941, where he himself played the role of Horatia Nelson, and Lee played Emma Hamilton. Since the United States had not yet entered the war, it was one of several Hollywood films made to evoke pro-British sentiments among American viewers. The film was popular in the United States and was an outstanding success in the Soviet Union. Winston Churchill organized a screening for a party attended by Franklin D. Roosevelt. The Oliviers remained Churchill's favorites, attending dinners and special events at his request for the rest of his life. In 1943, Vivian went on a tour of North Africa. Lee performed in front of the soldiers and then fell ill with a fever. In 1944, she was diagnosed with tuberculosis. Lee was filming Caesar and Cleopatra when she discovered she was pregnant and then had a miscarriage. Lee fell into a deep depression for a while. It was the first of many serious breakdowns in bipolar disorder. In 1947, Olivia was knighted and Lee accompanied him to Buckingham Palace for the dedication ceremony. She became Lady Olivier.
By 1948, Olivier had joined the board of directors of the Old Vic Theatre, and he and Lee embarked on a six-month tour of Australia and New Zealand to raise funds for the theatre. By the end of the tour, both were exhausted and ill. Olivier later remarked that he had lost Vivian in Australia. In January 1953, Lee traveled to Sandland to film Elephant Ride with Peter Finch. Shortly after filming began, she had a nervous breakdown, and Paramount Pictures replaced her with Elizabeth Taylor. She returned home and told her husband that she was in love with Finch and had an affair with him. Lee's romantic relationship with Finch flared and waned over the years, eventually fading as her mental state worsened. In 1958, considering her marriage over, Lee began a relationship with actor Jack Merivale, who knew about Lee's health and assured Olivier that he would take care of her. In 1960, he and Olivier divorced, and Olivier soon married actress Joan Plowright. Although Vivian was still plagued by bouts of depression, she continued to work in the theater and in 1963 won the Tony Award for Best Actress in the Musical Comrade. Lee's last appearance on screen in the movie Ship of Fools was both a triumph and a symbol of her disease, which took root. Lee's performance was tinged with paranoia and led to outbursts that soared her relationships with other actors. For her performance in the main role in The Ship of Fools, Lee received the El Lee Toil to Crystal Award. In 1967, her tuberculosis worsened again. Her death was publicly announced on July 8, and the lights of all theaters in central London were turned off for one hour. In 1968, Lee became the first actress to be so honored in the United States, organized by the University of Southern California in a ceremony that was held as a memorial service at which fragments from her films were shown. Colleagues such as George Cukor, who showed Lee's samples for the film Gone with the Wind for the first time in 30 years, expressed gratitude. 